Right, here we have Aidan. He's going to be working for David Bryan, creating scenery for what we believe to be an upcoming film, Something Underwater. No, it's definitely not The Little Mermaid. And these are going to be Mayan or Aztec inspired pieces. What are we going to be creating for him today, Aidan? Uh, today these are pillars, and they're going to be about 13 feet tall in total. And so we're going to do is a replication of these and then stacking them up with internal metal work. Uh, and then we're going to be making some figures, uh, a sunstone, which is like a quartz or quartal stone, a, a sun calendar. And what else were we doing for them? Can you remember? Sacrificial plinth, wasn't it? Oh, sacrificial plinth as well. Yeah, so, yeah, some nice bits and pieces all around. This is sort of right up your street, this kind of scenery, isn't it? But um, let's pop back to the beginning, shall we? Welcome to Sculpture Studios. Treating you guys with a bit of a monster for this video, and no, I'm not just talking about the sharks. Put aside a bit of time, put your feet up, don't dip your toes in the water, and it's over half an hour long for this one, probably best not to hold your breath. But enjoy the project anyway, that we're creating for the movie sequel of 47 Meters Down. Around the corner from us here in Basildon is an underwater studio. We're going to be creating scenery that will be suitable to go under the water for an extensive period of time. This is all going to be manufactured here at our studio with a base render and then transported down the road to be artworked and positioned underwater on set. Production designer and art director David Bryan has commissioned this project, thankfully with enough time to tackle all of the elements that we've been approached with. Quite often we find that usually with film things are often left to the last minute particularly when it comes to items for red carpet events. But it's fortunate for us in this instance that we're able to accommodate this project and take everything on. We've been sent drawings with measurements of different pieces that we're going to be making, with sizes and a mood board for references of how everything should look. Putting this video together, we're trying to arrange things so there's some sort of order. Generally speaking though, apart from the temple, which on its own will take considerable space in the studio and will be tackled later, everything's all on the go and being created simultaneously. We've had a large order delivered of our giant 8x4x2 by by foot billets of polystyrene, and these are then cut to size using a long hot wire. These are cut into their manageable size pieces that you can see here, and being used to create the base of the sacrificial plinth. All of the pieces are adhered together using a polyurethane expanding foam, and once this has had time to set, we're ready to go to work with wire brushes to carve the shape of the stone steps. Once everything has been carved on the steps, the polystyrene is given a light sanding just to help lose that polystyrene bead texture. Here Aiden's just going over with a heat gun so the polystyrene surface pulls back in places to create a more worn out texture. So here we are with the sacrificial stone. It's all been carved. Aiden stayed on late last night, didn't you Aiden? I did indeed sir. Did indeed, nice and late into the evening so we can get on with this today. It's a very thin, micron thin foil. We're going over with kind of a watery wallpaper paste. And this is basically just to give this a protective barrier between the polystyrene and the resin and glass fiber that's going on top. This is what Kev and Aiden are getting on with over here. Two ounce glass fiber. And the reason we're using the thin micron foil is so that after the fiberglass is set, the polystyrene can be removed from the inside as a polystyrene is very buoyant and it will float otherwise as this is all going underwater so the poly needs to be removed leaving us just with the fiberglass shell to install metal work with afterwards here we are late in the evening again making these large columns for a film set that is to go underwater going to create two of these and then repeat them in the moulding with metal work up the centres, like these. Just start in now, see how we get on this evening.
So, what's going on here, Liam? Oh, that's me. Well, oh, no, <laughs> so, can you just talk us through what's going on here, Kieran? Uh, we're just covering these polystyrene pinners in uh, wallpaper paste and then going over with this thin foil. It's uh, easier to get on, easier to get off, and it makes the uh, process a lot more efficient. And this is exactly the same process as the stairs. Instead of using our usual sticky back tin foil, which is used when we're keeping something into the job, this wallpaper paste and this thin foil allows you to remove the polystyrene um, and it just makes the whole process a lot easier rather than having to rip something out that's permanently stuck on there. And this micron thin foil, this is probably about four times thinner than the regular foil that we use or the foil that you have in your kitchen. And uh, yeah, it took us a while to find this product, another secretly sourced tin foil, because we know you love those secrets. Well, thanks for taking the time to come all the way down here, Chris, but we've all got to make sacrifices, haven't we? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he knows He knows I'm coming over to do a joke. I had an inkling you were going to say. Oh, inkling, very good. Chris has come down to the studio as one of our freelance sculptors when times are particularly busy and is carving the stone detailing on all the visible sides of the sacrificial table. We've been sent reference shots by the client of the sort of look and feel they're after and we'll be sending David photographs for approval once the master carving is complete. Good, Chris. I was going to carve this all on my own, but I've got Chris in. Was that a Mayan joke? Terrible. Yeah. Terrible. All on my own. My yes. own. Yeah, we got it, we got it. Do you enjoy fiberglass in Jess? Mm, yes and no, but I mean, it's a necessary step I've got to take. Necessary step! Oh, there's Kevin. Yeah, I've been foiled. For the columns, we've created essentially the top two cylindrical pieces of a four-piece column. So basically, we've carved the top half of one single column. Now to take you through the planning process and the construction of this, at the very beginning of the project, we could have quoted for creating each individual column from polystyrene. These would have been all hand carved at full size, by which the client would have paid for six master patterns, then paid for six moulds, as these need to be cast so that they're hollow, and then paid for each individual cast. By cutting down to not even just one column, but to one half, we've dramatically reduced a chunk of the client's budget by 12 times less for the master pattern carving, and 12 times less again for the moulding of each column. As with these being a relatively uniform shape, by the time each piece is cast and spun round and artwork differently, you won't be able to tell that they're all taken from exactly the same one half of a mould. After the polystyrene pattern's been removed, we clean the interior of the mould, removing any sharp points that the resin and fibreglass won't like trying to wrap around. We're going in with pieces of clay before creating each cast, so that this way cracks and deformations appear in the surface and make each column different to the rest. You're going to see this process repeated later when it comes to creating the standing stone figures. Here we have the top plinth of the sacrificial stone. What's going on here, Aidan? Um, this is the, uh, the top side, it's just polystyrene at the moment. Um, the client's been down, they've proved it all, and he likes it. Look, like the whole general feel of the whole thing. The only thing they're after is a bit more of the broken down than the weather feel, as if it's not brand new and it's, it's ancient and been underwater for a long, long time. 
So I'm just going to sort of destroy it and distress it a little bit now. It's always important to get approval from the client at this stage, so any changes can be made whilst the sculpture is still in its polystyrene form. David's happy for us to crack on with the work. <laughs> oh, crack on, that's a good one, isn't it, Jen? <laughs> oh. So keep it natural. He's happy with us to crack on and give this a blanket coat of glass fibre. This blanket coat means the detail is going to be somewhat covered over, so that's why the carving has been slightly accentuated to accommodate for this. The female one, fairly generic, the whole thing, as if there's no real shape to it at all. It's been underwater for years. And in relation to the other one, which is a male figure, so she's got a bit of a belly and a bum on her own hips, some boots, where this one's got a bit of a, a diamond shape to his chest. And also the height difference, he's six foot two. By the time it's up here, so she's about She's about five foot six. And the whole idea is you make a male and a female and then they hold hands or butt knuckles together beside each other like that. And there's 21 in total, probably 10 female and 11 males. And we're going to make them in sets of two. And once these are all fiberglass, like all the rest of the pieces, uh, they're going to be covered in moss and algae and everything else that grows at the bottom of the sea. So they're going to look really dishevelled, as, as though they've been under the sea for, for many, many years. At this point in time, we've invited our client David down to the studio to take a look at the work so far. Along with him he's brought members of the team who are working on various other parts of the project and this is mainly so that everyone knows what's happening and we can see everything's on schedule and in case any elements of the project coming up need to be discussed. This is the first time that we've worked with David and obviously the first time David's worked with us as well so for such a large first project it's important that he's confident with our expertise and has faith in our company so luckily the website and our online portfolio videos have already spoken for themselves. It's also good for us to feel reassured that everything's being handled and taken care of. When it's our turn to hand over the work at the next part of the process, everything needs to run smoothly so that nothing falls behind schedule. It's handy being literally down the road from our client, but it's the little things like quick feedback and good communication that really help a project like this run smoothly, and we literally had no problems every step of the way. For the quartz cottle stone calendar, we're taking a silicon mould of a detailed master pattern. We're going to be creating a lightweight fiberglass version of this, but we need to ensure that all of the surface detail is as sharp as the original, and that's why we're using the rubber. We build this up in multiple layers, so the skin is nice and thick, and can withstand a bit of manipulation. Okay Kevin, what are you doing here? Just putting a gel coat on top of the silicon. As you can see, the silicon's poking through, and there are the toggles that allow us to locate it once we remove it and put it back in again. Once it's set, we're going to be putting the fiberglass on top of this. The fiberglass is being used as a jacket, so the rubber retains the correct shape when it's being cast. The toggles help us locate the rubber back into the jacket, into the correct position, before we go in with a layer of gel coat. In this instance, as the surface rises and falls with all the detail, in order to make sure the glass fibre will laminate the gel coat layer underneath, we're sprinkling in some chopped strands of fibreglass whilst the gel coat is still semi-set so it has something to key onto properly. We then back this up with glass fibre and leave it to set overnight, ready for extraction the next day. The sandstone colour of the gel coat provides a good base layer colour for any artwork going on top. So already, you can get an essence of how this is going to turn out at the end. In the meantime, the same process of this sandstone colour has been applied to the inside of the two halves of the half column mould. 
So here are all the columns, now been fiberglassed and they've now been joined along the seam lines using glass fibre as well on the inside. All the way down on both sides, all 12 parts of the columns to create six full standing columns. But now we're just putting one on top of the other so we can see that join line around there and these are going to be bolted together around a flange on the inside. It's a lovely word, flange. And then on the exterior, the seam lines are being made up using car body filler. Here you can see how the small additions of clay on the inside of the mould introduce the cracks and imperfections in the stone surface. This helps break up that uniformity between each column and just gives the sculptures the appearance of a little more age and a bit more weight. Though eventually we'll be going over everything you see here with a concrete render, we're cleaning up the seam lines generally with car body filler and sanding it back. This is just so there isn't even the slightest hint of a seam line after the final art working. Ah, uh, here we are, the moment you've all been waiting for. Finally, the secret of the sticky back tinfoil. Basically, where we get this from... Oh, hold on a sec, sorry, sorry. Hello, Sculpture Studios. Right, here we are with the figures. With our silver foil. I saw you, Clive. Uh, Don't try and hide. <laughs> you realise this is the only clip you're going to be in, sneaking in on the project, just so he's part of it. He's only here to pick up some glue sticks and he's trying to trying to scrounge a bit of work. He can't help himself, look. That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so what's going on here, Aiden? Well, incidentally, we've made a lovely figure. They look a bit like a morgue figures at the moment, creating a flange along the side, which then splits the mould into two halves. And then we have a production mould with fiberglass. Here we're using just kind of a flexible plastic shim, cutting with a knife. And this is inserted so that when we go over with our gel coat and glass fibre on both sides, it's a nice little dividing wall. And then we can pop this apart, scrap the material on the inside, unfortunately. So goodbye to our silver cyborg-y looking characters here. And, uh, and then we have to clean out the interior of the mould to not too much of a good finish because these are only going to be very rough rock shapes anyway. They're all going to be covered in texture and coral and paintwork, so it doesn't really matter how neat the fiberglass is. Um, but they obviously need to be safe to handle by the team that are installing them underwater. 21 in total. 21 in total. The metalwork's been very neatly created, as expected from Martin at Fine Limit Welding. Everything's been given a layer of a red oxidised paint to protect it under the water for the duration of the shoot. David's son Tom Bryan has come down to the studio again to check in on the progress once more. Tom is art director for the movie, and here he's talking through with Aidan the eventual concrete finish that's going to be placed on everything we're creating. We've had items outside in the public domain for years at a time, exposed to the elements, hot, cold, wind and rain, but being underwater is something of a different story. We're confident that even though this is a water-based material, it'll be durable enough once applied to withstand the shoot underwater and maybe a couple of sharks bumping into it. Time will tell, for now other parts of the project need to be considered for when we're finished with everything our end. Transportation will need to be organised to get these from our location to the underwater studio at the other end of the estate. Also in terms of timing, how everything can be collected piece by piece as of when each element is finished, so that we have room in our studio to start working on the next big part of the build. So here we are with the pillars. So far everything's been joined along with the seam lines and around here and now the top and bottom ends are being placed on. Inside we've got internal metal work that runs up through the entire job. We've made sure we've zinged out any fiberglass that would prevent this box frame from going inside. This bolts to the other side of the metal work so this grill can be placed on the bottom. This way when these are lowered into the tank in order to make sure these can be weighted down they put rocks and stones or anything like that on top of these grills. When it comes to the end of the chute you can undo these bolts on the top this whole top section can move away, they can take off all the stones and they can lift this base section out as well. In order to make sure that this metal work doesn't rattle around inside the job, we're creating little brackets in this metal here. If I just bend this with the... Like that. And these brackets are then installed inside 
They're going to be welded to the metalwork and then laminated to the inside of the fiberglass. It's the constructional side of the project, not the pretty stuff. Aiden's very much the pretty stuff. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. So here we've got the first two columns finished going outside. What we've done on the underside here will be called extra metal work. So there's a nice strong lip coming to all these to be tipped and stood up and laid down on. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. What's happening here, Aidan? Well, I made a mould here, and in order to make this all uh, completely different from one another, so they're unique, we're adding patches of clay in there, which will give you a, an, an impression of sort of breakdown or decay, like within the sculpture itself. So uh, each one will look different, and this is just completely random. And hopefully, when they come out, definitely when they come out. Yeah, no, hopefully about it. Yeah. Definitely when they come yeah, they're out. Really different to each other, so really good. Let's have a look at these when they come out. Now that all these figures have been taken from the mould and trimmed, all this clay then needs to be removed as much as possible from the cracks. And all the PVA blue is washed off with the hot water. So that when it comes to putting the dry deck concrete on, which has just arrived, 16 buckets of it in an almond colour, the PVA blue is washed off so that the concrete has something to adhere to properly rather than the release agents. Hey Liam. No pressure Liam, but you better get all that clay out in this one take. I mean, we're really streamlining this whole process for the video. Oh, very nice Liam, lovely. That's the acting degree kicking in. Bearing in mind we're creating about 23 figures in total, using the male and the female moulds we can create one cast of each gender per day, so already that's nearly two weeks worth of casting alone just for the figures themselves. This is let alone the time it takes for the clay removal, the washing of the PVA blue, all the trimming of the excess fibreglass and the concrete rendering that you see going on here, as well as everything else we've got going on in the studio simultaneously. Maybe the video doesn't quite do the calibre of the work justice, as we're skimming past it in just a few short clips, but there we go. Structural work still needs to be going on, and metal work is being created for the sacrificial plinth. This is so the job can break down into multiple pieces, and can be bolted together and weighted down from the inside on site. We're also creating metal work for the figures as well, to ensure these are stable and can be stood upright. Internal leg supports have been welded to a base section, and these need to be laminated inside each figure before the two halves can be joined together. This in itself takes a lot of time to construct, and is another element of the job that we need to accommodate for when first timing and quoting for the project. With all the elements of the first half of the project nearing completion, what the heck is that? Where are the sharks? I said monsters of the deep, I didn't want an LED light show. <sighs> anyway, we're now organising for everything to be picked up to clear the way for the temple construction. Right, here we are with the temple entrance. All the figures are continuing to be laid up in the background. For now, we've had 10 blocks of poly sent to the workshop. All these have been cut into manageable sized strips and the thicknesses we're going to have these walls built. And then this is just being blocked out in its very early stages. This is all going to be blanket coated with glass fibre. The polystyrene is going to be removed, the same as the columns. Let's get a shot of the inside for now. These walls need to be extended further this way. And then there's going to be a wall that extends up. And then an entrance will be cut out. Here I am, 
past 11 of an evening, PM, working, trying to get the set built, this Mayan temple, or Aztec set, whichever you prefer. Blocking it up, polystyrene first of all, getting a rough shape and getting all the sort of, uh, the sort of heaviness of the stone. And then we're going to foil it and then glass the whole thing, break it down into segments so it's all transportable. Um, yeah, we'll work until about two o'clock in the morning. Uh, or until I get tired basically, but yeah, all taking shape. There we go, better demonstration of the amount of work that goes on behind the scenes. Once again, this set will need to be broken down into multiple pieces, so that not only is it easily transportable, but can get out of the studio in the first place. The whole construction is confirmed with the client before any glass fibre work takes place. The aim for this part of the project is for everything to remain as lightweight as possible, which means a very thin blanket coat of glass fibre, the polystyrene pattern removed from the inside, and a lightweight metalwork structure. Right, it's Sunday morning. Kevin, Liam and Kieran have come in over the weekend to finish off the fibre glassing so that by the time the rest of the crew come back in on Monday, everything's going to be ready to be assembled. Uh, we've gone over with two ounces of glass fibre, so this is all going to be relatively lightweight, and uh, we've reinforced all the edges with extra strips, just to give it a bit of extra strength. Um, all the polystyrene is going to be removed from the inside, once again for buoyancy, to get rid of that, and it's going to be replaced with lightweight metalwork. So this will be nice and easy to lift, and uh, once everyone's back, We'll work out all the bolting points of how this is going to fit together, break down for transportation and, uh, and go back together at the other end when it's put under the water. These seam lines will all need to be made up. Not bad considering that these were made completely separate. So we've got all the sizes and the heights right and this can easily be amended, joined together and everything is going to be gone over with our, with our drive it render as well. And yeah, it's just a lovely project all round, and it sort of reminds us of when Aidan used to do more theme park work, which unfortunately we don't see much of anymore. But uh, these giant bespoke pieces of, of large scenery, it obviously fills up the studio, gives everyone loads of work here. It feels like an achievement when it finally leaves the workshop, and it looks great on location, great in the videos. And uh, and yeah, it's just it's just kind of the the kind of work that we really welcome nowadays and look forward to working on. Yeah, this is how the Mayans built the whole thing. Polystyrene, fiberglass, lift up, job done. Whee! <laughs> Roger have just come along and relieved us of all the Aztec people. Here they are. Oh, very nice. There's quite obviously a vast difference between the Mayans and the Aztecs. Apart from them both originating in Mexico many, many years ago, there are bound to be experts out there that watch this video and would like to correct us on any lingo or inaccuracies. But for the purpose of the work, we've just been given a very vague brief to work to, so apologies if anyone is put out by the generalisation. Hopefully everyone can appreciate the project for what it is, the nature of the work, and our love for creating it. 
Now that everything has been finished, seam lines cleaned up, concrete renders applied, and all our finishing touches in place, it's time for this to head to the underwater studio. It's great to be part of a project where we can create film work without the need to travel to location as everything could be done here in-house. The fact that our client for this project hadn't worked with us before, it often means there's usually a bit of breaking in time, as essentially there's a little apprehension when dedicating a project to someone new. But from the word go, upon David's first trip to the studio, with drawings and concept images, it's been smooth sailing ever since. It's nice to be trusted to crack on with the job, where the client knows everything's taken care of, so it's one less thing for them to worry about. For us, it's fantastic news that the first movie did so well at the box office, that the budget for the sequel, 47 metres down uncaged, allowed for more sculptural work. It's incredible how many things are created via CG nowadays, but there's something that feels more authentic when you have a real piece of set right in front of you. I say authentic, even if it is created from glass fibre. So here we are at the underwater studios, around the corner from our studio. There's filming going on next door, so we're going to be quiet. But here all the figures have been textured and rendered to look like stone. And these were these were underwater. How long were they underwater for? Uh, for about three weeks. Uh, then they popped them out. Uh, yeah, they look really good apparently, so they're really pleased. We'll soon find out once the film comes out, see just how good they looked underwater. Got all various figures and columns being used. There's the sunstones. Yeah, looks lovely. We just had a little look inside the tank. That's a long way down inside that tank. We could barely see through the water the top of one of our columns. So that's really, really deep. And the actors are down there at the moment, uh, apparently spotting a shark. Upon our trip to set, we didn't actually realise the actors sitting in the water in front of us were the daughters of Jamie Foxx and Sylvester Stallone. I don't mean their children together, I mean individually they've had their own... Hmm. Pretty much unrecognisable in their scuba gear. No sharks in sight, but I guess we're going to have to wait for the movie to see how that turns out, as the days of giant animatronic props are dwindling a little. You can see here just how great the scenery looks in its intended setting, and how the water, the lighting, and even the shots here before the post-production editing makes them look right at home. We'd like to thank David and Tom Bryan for first approaching us with the work, as it's been a fantastic project from start to finish. No problems, no hold-ups, and we would welcome any work in the future for whatever projects are in the pipeline. Another thank you must go to John West for providing all of the technical drawings and the measurements at the beginning of the project, and to Roger and Will Dengate for making sure that the transitions from our studio went as smoothly as possible. It was very much appreciated. The last big thank you must go to all of you that have made it through this entire video. To date, this is by far the longest we've made, but hopefully you've enjoyed a more comprehensive walkthrough of the entire project. Please feel free to leave any comments below, as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook, and follow at Aidan Hines on Twitter, and for more of our work, visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.